Hello, my name is uh, Florian Kaltenberger. Uh, I'm an uh, assistant professor at uh, Euricom and also the general secretary of the Open Air Interface uh, Software Alliance. And it's my pleasure to present to you today the, the status of the, of the 5G radio access network and the roadmap ahead. All right, to start with, I'd like to thank um, our contributors. Um, so there, this list is becoming longer and longer. Um, so of course, Euricom is one of the, the biggest contributors still. Um, there's also Nokia Bell Labs, Orange, Fraunhofer, ISC, TCL, NTUST, Global Edge, Fujitsu, Interdigital, and very recently also Albi Smart and BUPT joined. So what I'm presenting today is basically a, a real community effort and I'm, I'm really happy that now with, with NR um, we're finally really seeing a, a big growth in, in really code contributions. So it's it's becoming also uh, very challenging at, at our end to to coordinate all these people and uh, um, you know to make sure uh, the code gets integrated and tested correctly. So um, the five G and R development is um, happening in uh, three different phases. Um, uh, as you will see, we're now actually in phase uh, three. So phase one was uh, an intermediate phase, um, so which was uh, delivered um, in the in the beginning of this year. So where we had uh, uh, G Node B um, working together with uh, the OAI UE. Um, this is an evolution of what in LTE we already had called the No S1 mode, which allows you to use um, G Node B and OAI UE um, without the core network. Um, and it will give you a, a simple network interface at, uh, at both ends that allows you to pass IP traffic. Um, then in, uh, during the summer, um, we delivered the non-standalone mode, also called EUTRA NR Dual Connectivity, ENDC. Um, so, as you know, this um, this mode uh, relies on a on an existing LTE network, and so it also uses the uh, the LTE core, the EPC, to uh, to uh, do the initial connection and to do all the signaling over the LTE link, and then only the data link uh, will be over the 5G cell. And right now, uh, we're working heavily on the um, uh, standalone mode. So standalone is. Um, does not require an LTE network, and it uh, requires to connect the G node B to the to the five G core. Um, so this is um, this is what we are working on right now. Um, I'll be very brief here, but um, just to give you an idea what uh, what features we we support. Um, so the the NSA implementation um, supports. Um, switching of the of the traffic from the 4G network to the 5G network. So we don't do any split bearers or, or link aggregation. So as soon as the uh, the UE is configured for 5G and the, the initial access on 5G has passed, we switch all the traffic uh, to the to the 5G link. Um, so obviously this requires that uh, that you know um, the RRC and the X2 AP are all um, you know uh, up to the standard. Um, on the level of the the Mac, um, we we use the, uh, the the FAPI interface, uh, which was specified by the small cell, cell forum. Uh, we already used it in LTE. Now we use it for for five G as well. Um, we support for the moment only contention free random access, um, which is possible in uh, in non standalone. Um, we have now support for multiple project occasions. We have uh, 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 we used to have a very primitive scheduler, but now very recently we upgraded the scheduler. Um, we can handle hybrid RQ and ECNEC. We can handle now also CSI measurement reporting and uplink power control. On the FI, we currently support uh, 30 kilohertz subcare spacing for FR1 and 120 kilohertz subcare spacing for FR2. 
Um, we have all the basic um, physical uplink and uh, and downlink channels, um, with some uh, restrictions, of course, um, that you can see here. Uh, but all the all the major um, uh, features are are implemented here. There's even support now for for PTRS and uh, and CSI. And uh, since a long time now, we have a highly efficient uh, uh, 3GBP compliant LDBC and polar encoders and decoders um, that allow you to run the whole thing on a um, entirely in software. Um, as I said, we also have a, a UE. Um, so this UE today only works um, using this um, NOS1 mode, um, which creates a, a, a tune interface um, to the PDCP to inject and receive user plane traffic. Um, so at the UE, we support initial sync, um, make five configuration um, and basic uh, control also over the FAP interface. Uh, random access procedure using multiple Pratch occasions, handling of DCI and hard procedures, and uh, all the other features on the file layer that you've seen before. Additionally, we also support the initial sync and selection of the strongest beam. Um, time tracking based on, on DMRS and frequency offset estimation. On regarding functional splits in uh, 5G, um, as I said, we have um, within the DU, we have this uh, FAPI interface, uh, which is compliant with the small SIM form 5G FAPI, um, which current, currently is a functional interface. So um, it's, it's currently implemented using function calls and shared memory. Um, but there's also NFAPI uh, coming up um, to be able to actually split this into two different entities. Um, we have a frontal interface um, based on uh, ORAN 702. Um, so this has been done together with um, partner Benetel. So we support the Benetel RIU using this ORAN 702 interface. Today this is U-plane only, so no control plane, no sync plane. Um, but that was also on the on the roadmap. F1 um, is um, partially done, so F1C is done. F1U is uh, um, not quite done yet, um, and uh, it also needs to be integrated properly into the into the 5G um, architecture. Regarding interoperability, um, so today um, we can uh, connect with a with a, a commercial off-the-shelf phone. So here you see a little bit the test bench that we have set up to do these tests. And in the meantime, uh, people all over the world have started to set up similar test benches and validate this tool. Um, actually, we use um, um, two B210s for this case. So as long as you um, stay below 50 megahertz of uh, bandwidth, you can use B210. Um, they're synced with an, with an octoclock. Um, and one is operating at uh, band 7, 2.6 gigahertz. The other one at the band N78, 3.5 gigahertz. And we use an operator 5G that has uh, capabilities to, to record uh, traces um, and that we can analyze with the Qualcomm QCAT software. So here's a simple screenshot that shows you that it, um, that it works. There's also a, uh, a YouTube video available um, and, a, and a conference paper that summarizes the, uh, and that shows a bit more in detail um, some of the logs and, and message exchanges. You can also see here that uh, the latency and the throughput are not that great yet. Um, so, which brings me to the uh, current limitations. So, the throughput is indeed limited. We do have an issue um, today for uh, for high MCS. Actually, um, even for for MCS above um, twelve Q um, sixteen QAM, we have um, a reduced throughput. Uh, we still haven't identified the root cause for this. Um, we we are uh, working quite um, heavily on this. Um, and um, before we fix this, we're also not scheduling all the slots, uh, but the architecture is ready to do that. So as soon as we have uh, identified the cause for the MCS, um, we'll start scheduling multiple slots. Uh, today, the scheduler only supports a single user, um, but multi-users is on the way. Um, we do not have interoperability with uh, FR2 yet. We have a test bench for this too, um, and even a phone. Um, but uh, the phone is not um, can be configured uh, with the 5G uh, measurements, but it's not seeing any of the 5G measurements. So um, 
we're, we're not quite sure why. So this is under um, investigation. And the OAI UE is not very stable at this moment, but again, improvements are in progress. So the, the plan really is to, to have um, um, full throughput. I mean, we're working full speed on that. So um, by the end of November, I hope we get the full throughput on, um, on the 106 uh, PRB configuration, so the 40 megahertz configuration. And by December, uh, hopefully we can up that to um, double that. Um, so we use the whole 80 megahertz configuration. We're also working quite uh, intensively on uh, beamforming support for FR2. Um, so we already have the initial access with uh, multiple with, um, with beam selection uh, that just has to be validated with a with a phone. CSI feedback um, is also partially there and will be completed soon. And then TCI states are used by the GNOT-P to signal the UE um, any change in the um, in the beam. So that will hopefully come in January. We're also integrating a new scheduler in this GNOT B um, that will be used for, uh, that will uh, support multi user scheduling. So that should be ready by the end of the year. Um, FR2 interoperability, um, again, we, we're very close and we hope to be able to finish this by the end of the year. Full and FAPI split. So this is work actually carried out by IIC. Um, they're very close as well and hopefully should be able to deliver soon. And MIMO support is done by Fraunhofer. And also that's, uh, the, they have, um, um, the, they're doing the final tests internally. So this should be integrated um, very soon as well. Now, um, I also want to talk a bit about the roadmap for 5G standalone. Um, so as I said in the beginning, this is uh, phase three. And this is what we're working on today. Um, so there are quite a few things that um, need, to be, need to be done here. Uh, for example, the initial bandwidth part, um, which includes the course at zero, needs to be validated. So this is a little, little bit of a different parameter set than um, we use today. Uh, scheduling of, we need it in standalone mode, we need a SIB1. Um, uh, so that's actually already being tested. We need to include the contention resolution um, for the contention-based random access. Um, we now in standalone mode, we also need to uh, configure the signaling radio barriers in the RLC. The F1 interface we want to complete here because um, it's part of, of standalone. RLC, uh, there are quite a few things to be done that the new messages, configuration, um, uplink, downlink message transfer, and the, in, and the interfaces north and south. NGAP, the same. SDAP is a, a new element in 5G standalone that we need to, that's, uh, you know, can be transparent, but still need to be included. And we're also working on architecture improvements, um, especially with related to the GPU um, and the RC. Um, so, yeah, as I said, the, the course at the zero scheduling through MIP and scheduling of SIP1 is already done and under validation. RC messages are done. Configuration of RLC, MACFI also done. NGAP is, uh, is under uh, in progress. We also are uh, planning to have a full functional um, UE, standalone UE. Um, so more or less all the things that I said before need to be done with the, with the UE as well. And we also want to have, a, we also, um, so this is the work done by uh, the open sales project, Laurent uh, Thomas, um, working on an interface uh, with NAS, with a UCM emulator and a network interface, so that you really have a, a, a full, um, that uh, you'll potentially be able to um, connect this OAI UE to a commercial standalone network. The timeline for all these things are uh, as follows. So. Um, we're currently doing some testing of the existing elements already. Um, interoperability testing is, is starting now. Um, and the goal is to have a first a complete connection with the OAI UE uh, in standalone by the end of 2020. Um, maybe even with the, with the COTS phone before the end of the year. Um, but I'm, I'm usually a bit um, pessimistic with, uh, with these predictions. So I'd rather say with the commercial phone, um, we'll have a, uh, a resolution up and running by uh, Q1 uh, 2021. Okay, 
Um, that um, concludes my my presentation. And um, yeah, I'll be happy to answer questions.